Chairadhamadava Kunjabihade Chairadha Madhava Kunjabihade Kopi Janavala Ba Kiri Varadari Kopi Janavala Ba Kiri Varadari Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Here's Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa Bhadi Rajakacharya, Ashtata Shatta Shri Shimad is Divine Grace, the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai, Nama Charya Shri Laharida Stakra Ki Jai, Prem Sikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopana Shama Kundrada Kungiri Gopadan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Navadweep Dham Ki Jai Ganga Yamunamaya Ki Jai Tosi Maharani Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai All glories to the Sambhu Devotees All glories to the Sambhu Devotees All glories to the Sambhu Devotees All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Guranga <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Six Canto, Prescribed Duties for Mankind. Chapter 3, Yamaraj instructs his messengers. Text 24. Etavatalam aga nirharanaya tumsam senkirtanam bhagavato guna karma Nam Nam Vikushya Putram Agavan Yad Jamilopi Narayaneti Mriyamana 
ഇയായ മുക്തിം ഏതാവതാളം അഗനിഹരണായ പുംസാം സങ്കീർത്തനം ഭഗവതോ ഗുണകർമ്മ വിഘൃഷ്യപുത്രമഗവാന്യരജാമിലോപി നാരായണേതി മൃയമാനയ മുക്തി Should I go up one? Yeah. I don't know. Etavatalam aganiharanaya pumsam Etavatalam aganiharanaya pumsam Sankirtanam bhagavato guna karma nam nam Sankirtanam bhagavato guna karma nam nam Vikrusha putra magavanya rajami lopi Vikrusha putra magavanya rajami lopi Narayaneti miryamana iaya muktim Narayaneti miryamana iaya muktim Etavatala maganiharanaya pumsam Sankirtanam bhagavato guna karma nam nam Vikrusha putra magavanya rajami lopi Narayaneti miryamana iyaya muktim to chant
ಕೀರ್ತನ ಭಗವತ ಗುಣಕರ್ಮ ನಾಮ ವಿಕೃಷ ಪುತ್ರ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಯರಜಾಮಲೋಪಿ ನಾರಾಯಣೇತಿ ಮೇಯ ಮಾನಯ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಅಲಂ ಸಫಿಶಿಯಂ agnirharanaya for taking away the reactions of sinful activities pumsam of human beings sankirtanam the congregational chanting bhagavata of the supreme personality of godhead guna of the transcendental qualities karma nam nam and of his names according to his activities and pastimes vikushya crying to without offense putram his son bhagavan the sinful yet since ajamil api even ajamil narayana the lord's name narayan iti thus miryamanaha dain ya iya ya achieved muktim liberation translation a commentary by divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupada therefore it should be understood that one is easily relieved from all sinful reactions by chanting the holy name of the lord and chanting of his qualities and activities this is the only process recommended for relief from sinful reactions even if one chants the holy name of the lord with improper pronunciation <laughs> he will achieve relief from material bondage if he chants without offenses a jamil for example was extremely sinful but while dying he merely chanted the holy name and although calling his son he achieved complete liberation because he remembered the name of narayan purport in the assembly of raghunath das goswami's father haridas talk or confirmed that simply by chanting the holy name of the lord one is liberated even if he does not chant completely and offensively smart brahmins and mayavadis do not believe that one can achieve liberation in this way but the truth of haridas talk's statement is supported by many quotations from shrimad bhagavatam In his commentary on this verse for example Sri Darshwami gives the following quotation Sayam pratargrinan bhaktya dukha graman vimuchite if one always chants the holy name of the lord with great devotion in the evening and in the morning one can be- become free from all material miseries another quotation confirms that one can achieve liberation if one hears the holy name of the lord constantly every day with great respect anudinam idam adarena shinvan another quotation says shavanam kirtanam dhyanam harir adbhut karmana janma karma gunanam cha tat arte kila cheshtatam one should always chant and hear about the extraordinarily wonderful activities of the lord one should meditate upon these activities and one should endeavor to please the lord 
from the Bhagavatam 11, 327. Sridhar Swami also quotes from the Puranas, Papa Chayash Chabhavati Smar- Smaritam Tamahar Nisham. One can become free from all sinful reactions simply by remembering the lotus feet of the Lord day and night, Ar Nisham. Furthermore, he quotes from Bhagavatam 6.3.31, Tasmat Sankirtanam Vishnur Jagan Mangalam Angs Anghasam Mahatama Pikur Ravya Vidyay Kantika Nishkritam. All these quotations prove that one who constantly engages in chanting and hearing of the holy activities, name, fame, and form of the Lord is liberated. As stated wonderfully in this verse, Etav Talam Aganir Hernaya Pumsam. Simply by uttering the names of the Lord, one is freed from all sinful reactions. The word alum, which is used in this verse, indicates that simply uttering the holy name of the Lord is sufficient. This word is used with different imports. As stated in the Amara Kosha, the most authorized dictionary in the Sanskrit language. Alam Bhushana Parayapti Shaktivarana Vajukam. The word alam is used to mean ornament, sufficiency, power, and restraint. Here the word alam is used to indicate that there is no need of any other process. For the chanting of the holy name of the Lord is sufficient. Even if one chants imperfectly, one becomes free from all sinful reactions by chanting. The power of chanting the holy name was proved by the liberation of a jamil. When Ajamal chanted the holy name of Narayan, he did not precisely remember the Supreme Lord. Instead, he remembered his own son. At the time of death, Ajamal certainly was not very clean. Indeed, he was famous as a great sinner. Furthermore, one's phys- physiological condition is completely disturbed at the time of death. And in such an awkward condition, it would, it would certainly have been very difficult for Ajamal to have chanted clearly. Nevertheless, a Jamal achieved liberation simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord. Therefore, what is, what is to be said of those who are not sinful like a Jamal? It is to be concluded that with a strong vow, one should chant the holy name of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. For thus one will certainly be delivered from the clutches of Maya by the grace of Krishna. The chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is recommended even for persons who commit offenses because if they continue chanting, they will gradually chant offenselessly. By chanting the Hare Krishna mantra without offenses, one increases his love for Krishna. As stated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Prema Pumarto Mahan. One's main concern should be to increase one's attachment to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and to increase one's love for Him. In this regard, Srila Vishnath Chakravati Thakur quotes the following verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 11, 19, 24. Evam dharma manushyanam udhavatmani vedinam mai sanjayate bhakti konyorto sva vashishyate. My dear Uddhava, the supreme religious system for human society is that by which one can awaken his dormant love for me. Commenting on this verse, Sri Vishnu Chakvati Thakur describes the word bhakti by saying, Premai voktaha ka anya arta asya. In the presence of bhakti, what is the necessity of liberation? Sri Vishnu Chakvati Thakur also quotes this verse from the Padma Purana. Nama parada yuktanam nama nyeva harantyagam avishranti paryukta. Tani Tanya Varta Karanicha. Even if in the beginning one chants the Hare Krishna mantra with offenses, one will become free from such offenses by chanting again and again. Papa Chayas Chabavati Smaratam Tam Arhanisham. One becomes free from all sinful reactions if one chants day and night, following the recommendation, recommendation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who quoted the following verse, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalim, Kalau Nasteva, 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 Katir, and Yata. In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only means of deliverance is chanting the holy name of the Lord. There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way. If the members of the Krishna consciousness movement strictly follow the recommendation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, their position will always be secure. Om 
When Srila Prabhupada was, uh, <laughs> he he would give uh, he would give he would meet with George Harrison um, at times here and there when he would be visiting London or he'd see him other places in the world, and uh, Srila Prabhupada would give George Harrison ideas for his different songs. Um, <clears throat> there was a discussion one time, and Srila Prabhupada was was quoting this song, uh, Hari Hari Vifale Janma Gainu, that song by Narottam Das Thakur, in which Narottam Das Thakur is, he's, he's praying to Krishna, he said, I've, I've wasted my human form of life. Although I've obtained this human form of life, I have not worshipped you, Radha and Krishna, and, and this way I've known the drink, drink and poison. And he's saying, uh, day and night my heart burns, uh, but I don't take the remedy for this, the chanting of the holy name. And he would say that this holy name is uh, descending from the spiritual world. Golok era prema dan harinam sankirtan. It's, it's descending from the spiritual world. Or as Narantara said one time, so many things are being imported from China, but this holy name is not being imported from China. <laughs> it's being imported to China. Anyways, there's a lot of devotees chanting, actually. Ratnabhushan Prabhu told me they sent like, I don't know, some like huge amount of murdungas over there. It was like, f how much was it? 50 or 100? Some, China. yeah. Devotees over there, you know, chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, so it's coming from the spiritual world, and, and he also mentions in this song that uh, Lord Chaitanya appeared, and, uh, uh, the son of. Sh Mother Yashoda, Krishna became um, the son of Shachimata, Lord Chaitanya, and Balaram Hoilo Nitai Balaram became Nitinanda. And they distributed the holy name to all sinful people and, and they delivered people. And the evidence of this is Tarsh Sakshi Jagai Madai. The evidence is Jagai Madai. Because we say, okay, well, who do they deliver? They say the evidence is here, Jagai Madai. Um, and then he's praying, please do not, do not, you're my only hope, Krishna, please do not, please keep me close to your lotus feet, do not kick me away, please. So Srila Prabhupada was saying that, he, he, he said that to Yamuna Devi, that that was his, one, that was his favorite song, a song by Naritam Das Thakur. But anyway, Srila Prabhupada was speaking with George Harrison and he was, <laughs> explaining this to him, this song, and, um, and other songs. And uh, George Harrison, of course, came up with his own uh, songs, but, yeah, obviously he was singing about Krishna. Um, but one of the songs, right, probably the most famous, <laughs> what's that one? <laughs> yeah. They're still playing it sometimes and on the radio and grocery stores sometimes. But uh, And he says, I really want to see you, but it, but it takes so long. Um, so Prabhupada hearing this, and he, he said it doesn't have to take long uh, to see Krishna. Um, there's one recording Prabhupada was saying, and he said, you could... You can see Krishna immediately, uh, provided you surrender. You have to surrender. You can see Krishna. Um, 
he said in the moment, just like that uh, that case in the Bhagavatam of what's the king's name? Huh? Because he, yeah, yeah, Maharaj Katvanya, because he was, he they asked him, or he he asked, okay, well, when am I going to, when am I going to die? And they said, well, you're going to die the next moment. And then he, he immediately surrendered <laughs> to Krishna. So in a moment, um, and we should, um, yeah, we should be eager to to uh, see Krishna. Now, of course, there's another aspect to this is that Krishna uh, wants to see us. And there's this whole idea of, you know, we're not the enjoyers of Krishna. It's not that, okay, Krishna, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, now appear before, you know, in my mind and, you know, dance for me, right? Dance for me, Krishna, like he's, like he's, of course, <laughs> there's a whole nother level. But you have in Vrindavan, the, the, the gopis, right, the elderly gopis, they'll say, Oh, Krishna, you dance for us, and you know we'll give you a sweet, you know, and Krishna will dance. But that's another thing. But we shouldn't be thinking that okay, now Krishna, you come and dance before me, and right, you, I'm, I'm, enjoy, I'm, I'm the enjoyer of Krishna. But Krishna is, we're meant to be servants of Krishna. Just like Srila Prabhupada was in India, and there was a man there, and and the man, uh, I mentioned this before, but it's a it's an important point, but the man was there, and uh, a man was there, and he was saying to Srila Prabhupada, let's join together. You're chanting Hare Krishna, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, you're getting so many people to chant Hare Krishna, I'm getting so many people to chant Hare Krishna, let's join together. And this man was, and, and then Srila Prabhupada said, uh, no. He said, we're not joining together. And he said, uh, what you're doing is against our principle. Uh, we do not, um, we do not engage Krishna in our service, but we we are servants of Krishna. So this man was getting people to chant Hare Krishna, but it was for the purpose of them, you know, carrying disease and health and for the wrong for material reasons. So Prabhupada said, "No, we're not joining." <laughs> Interesting. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, we go before the deity and we, of Krishna. We should, right? <laughs> Every day. Those who live by the temple sh should uh, see the deity every day. And especially, definitely those who live in the temple <laughs> should see the deity every day. And um, those who do not live in the temple, you, you, they have their own deities or the pictures or online. There's, right? But we're, we we take darshan of the deities um, and we pray right for for uh, mercy and and service and different right, spiritual things we pray for. Um, but there's also the uh, there's also the the principle of that the deity wants to see us, like we're 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 appearing before the deity. Um, so the deity could see us. Krishna wants to see us. Um, so, so we should keep it in mind that, yeah, we're not the enjoyers of Krishna, but we're the servants of Krishna. So we, sh so we should be eager to see Krishna, but not see him in a, in a, yeah, in an enjoying spirit, in a mundane way. Um, but see him to serve him. and right. So in this regard, uh, there's, because it's interesting, because a lot of the times, like I was speaking with some guy at the lounge last Thursday, the Krishna, uh, Thursday Krishna Lounge, and, and he was saying that he was a bit of an atheistic guy. He had a he had a very quick, you know, witty mind and very energetic, you know, fast talking, fast thinking guy from Czech, Slovakia, and um, 
he came with his Christian friend, which is interesting, but... <laughs> um, but anyways, the man was saying that, hey, well, you know, why can't Krishna just appear before me? He, why can't he just come before me and, you know, just present himself? And, you know, then we could talk and, you know, I'll be convinced, you know. And uh, he said, I know he's probably busy and everything, but, you know, he's probably got a lot of requests, you know, to deal with. But, he can expand himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyways, we're talking about that and... And he was talking about how he was having trouble with, for example, the, the, there are certain scriptural references, at least in biblical, about the history of or how, how old the universe is. And of course, our own Druta Karma, right? He's, he's uh, discovered a bunch of stuff. He's an archaeologist, so... To, to, to prove it, it's very, you know, much, much older than that. So he's saying, ah, how is this, how, how am I supposed to understand this? And this is supposed to be a perfect book. And, you know, he's going on like that. Um, he was also mentioning how, <laughs> he was also mentioning how, anyways, we'll, we'll, first we'll stick to this uh, seeing Krishna. Um, So he was saying how he wanted to see Krishna. Now, in relation to seeing Krishna, because sometimes devotees, they also feel like that. It's not just, you know, atheistic people, like, who feel like that. Like, hey, why doesn't Krishna just appear before me? Though? You know, I'll be really convinced then, and then I'll, I'll do really good on book distribution, or I'll, or I'm, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be convinced to be a pure devotee, or whatever it is. And sometimes... Devotees may feel that Krishna is ignoring them. Like, hey, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, I'm doing all these austerities, I'm, I'm, I'm serving the deities, I'm cooking offerings, and I, where's the reciprocation? Like, I, I, I'm not feeling the bhav here. Like, what's going on? Is Krishna ignoring me? And sometimes in really advanced levels, if you want to say advanced, <laughs> kind of know. They say, does Krishna even exist? Right? Um, but anyways, here in the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is a, a book written by Boyajan Prabhu, it's called Japa. So he's mentioning this, this point, um, which it's, it's, he mentioned some commentary, Vishnu Chagvati Thakur, which, <clears throat> he, yeah, he, it's... It, Amazing his different comments on the Bhagavatam. Of course, Srila Prabhupada, he's taking all of these commentators' work and he's, he's putting it in, in his books as well as his own. So, amazing. But anyway, so the question Boyajan Prabhu brings up here why doesn't he surrender, Krishna, to our need to see him if he loves us and wants us to help us reach him? Why doesn't he just appear before us? Vishnu Chakvati Thakur's commentary on the Rasalita section of Srimad Bhagavatam offers illumination. There he reveals Krishna's mind and how he deals with his devotees. He especially mentions the chanting of Krishna's names. So, for those surrendered souls who worship me through Nam Kirtan chanting and other means, I do not respond in order to make their worship more perfect. O gopis who cannot understand my real intention, not seeing me, those surrendered souls develop deep humility. So Krishna is saying that, the, that they're worshiping me through chanting and other means, but he says, I, I, I do not respond. <laughs> in order to make their worship more perfect. And then, by not getting the response of Krishna, then they develop deep humility. Thinking. Feeling, actually. As it mentions feeling, not just thinking, because one is to think, right? <laughs> one is to think. Um, another thing is to feel. It's the big difference. 
So feeling, alas, alas, everything I have, because you could think this, right? You could, th you could think this and you could feel it. So this is, alas, alas, everything I've done has been useless. Because I'm an offender, Krishna has not shown even the slightest favor toward me. Let me be damned. So one is, to th you could think this, right? Another thing is you could feel it. I have, everything I've done is useless, I'm an offender, and Krishna has not showed me the slightest favor. Let me be damned. So they develop humility. Krishna's not, a, not, not uh, responding. Then he continues, by constantly thinking in this way. So Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur is saying that this type of thinking is good. It's not only good, it's necessary. By constantly thinking in this way, those who have not yet developed mature love for me will become free from lust. Means selfishness and everything that goes with lust. Self, and fr free from lust and anger, and will awaken pure devotion that is full of power and brilliance. So it's not that oh, well, Krishna's not responding. All right, well, I just I don't know. I'm going to try someone else. <laughs> and I'm going to go for maybe maybe Surya will respond, right? Maybe uh, Indra will respond, or you know maybe my old girlfriend will respond, right? Somebody. Right, but they don't think like that. They think, okay, Krishna's not responding. So, so then they this awakens humility within them. They start thinking that all I've done is useless. In other words, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been sincere with Krishna. I haven't been serious enough. And I'm, and aside from that, I've just been an offender. I've just been offending Krishna and the devotees. So that's why Krishna is not receiving. So let me be damned. And thinking like this, and just in a very humble mood, then it says that this purifies a person more, and it helps them develop mature love for Krishna and get free of all of these other things in the heart that don't need to be there. And then the pure devotion that is full of power and brilliance that that that's there awakens. Um. So he he mentions many other things, Borja and Prabhu. He he, but I'll I'll read some of what he mentions. Uh, so he, he makes the point that how can we encourage Krishna to manifest himself to us? And then he says, chant offenselessly, avoid the ten offenses. And and you could say, oh, well, I can't do that. <laughs> That's too difficult, right? inattentiveness, that's too difficult, oh, my material attachments, I want to kind of keep those, or whatever it may be. We may think it's too difficult. Then we say we try. We try to avoid the ten offenses, because first we try to avoid the ten offenses, and then over time we're able to. Without trying, there's no how we're supposed to um, be, get to the point where we actually avoid them. It just doesn't happen like that. We have to try, and then... So anyways, it mentioned, this means, uh, so he says, Krishna is, unlimited, uh, Krishna is unlimitedly deep, but Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur was kind enough to reveal to us his psychology. Even while we are attempting to surrender ourselves and worship Krishna through service and chanting, Krishna does not respond immediately in order to make our worship more perfect. This means that his Lack of response is how he has chosen to respond. He is not ignoring us. He is being very personal in his dealings. He is not trying to show us that he does not care or that he is not aware of our struggle, but he uses his absence to help us develop a deep and humble yearning for him. So that's the... Uh, yeah, we'll just also say this because it's... We have committed unlimited offenses to other living entities, to Vaishnavas, to the Holy Name, to the deities, and to the Dham. Even though we're now attempting to chant, the mind is still filled by an offensive mentality. The independent Supreme Lord Krishna does not appear before us according to our desire, but as he wishes. Our purity, our humility, our dependence, and our desire should all be intensified.
Let me be damned. My critical nature and all the things I do that come from false ego rather than from my desire to serve Krishna. Let such repentance wash away our offensive mentality and our lust and anger with it. This is Sri the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's broomstick and shoe method. Look, O oh mind, how you are keeping me from Krishna. Such thinking frees the mind from passion and awakens pure devotion that is full of power and brilliance. It's a very beautiful... And then also in relation to this, uh, and it, because it's also in relation to like repenting or not lamenting one's inability to actually be connected to Krishna, uh, also a comment by Vishnu Chagvari Thakur. He says, my previous, by my previous shameful life, my heart is polluted by many illusory attachments. Personally, I have no power to stop them. Only Lord Krishna within my heart can remove such inauspicious contamination. But whether the Lord removes such attachments immediately or lets me going on being afflicted by them, I will never give up my devotional service to him. So he's saying that by my bad association, I have... I have uh, I have things within my heart that are not conducive to Krishna consciousness that are that are barring me, but whether Krishna immediately takes them away, or He allows me to suffer suffer with them, I'm not going to give up my service to Krishna. Uh, and He says, <laughs> "This is like really, even if the Lord places millions of obstacles in my path." And even if because of my offenses I go to hell, I will never for a moment stop serving Lord Krishna. I'm not interested in mental speculation and fruit of activities. Even if Lord Brahma personally comes before me offering such engagements, I will not be even slightly interested. Although I'm attached to material things, I can see very clearly that they lead to no good because they simply give me trouble and disturb my devotional service to the Lord. Therefore, I sincerely repent my foolish attachments to so many material things, and I am patiently awaiting Lord Krishna's mercy. So, uh, the, so, so devotees, they are by nature um, determined uh, they're determined to serve Krishna as this particular uh, as this particular last verse we just or the last uh, excerpt we read is describing so devotees are not uh, quitters and if anybody has this quitting mentality and they happen to be practicing Krishna consciousness because it's a very common uh, activity in Kali Yuga, or, yeah, we call a characteristic, quitting mentality, then they should just give it up. <laughs> because it's not, um, it's not helpful. It's, yeah, it's actually very bad. Huh? They should quit. Yeah, they should quit the quitting mentality um, anyways there's so many wonderful quotes here but I was going to read another one but anyways we can read another time so uh, so now it's Christmas Eve, right? We're, yeah. Um, we'll, have a, we'll have a gathering over at Mahabharata and Ladalis and Kirtan and devotees will be there, so very nice. Um, but it's interesting because uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas, it's a time of giving, right? People give and give gifts and everything, but it's also a time where People are expecting, <laughs> you know, they, they want stuff. They're expecting people to give them stuff. They want stuff, um, mostly material stuff. Um, and it's interesting how 
how uh, how religion in general or religious holidays how they uh, become not religious over time. Like Christmas, for example, it was it was it's 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 a Christian holiday. It's celebrating the birth of Christ, which is for Christians the the one of one of the most if yeah you could say the most important day of the year without Christ what is christianity right just like without buddha what is buddhism <laughs> so it's 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 an important holiday um but it's interesting how it how it progresses over time into something just very mundane um and so many holidays are like that, like St. Patrick. <laughs> He's a saint, you know. And what are they doing on his holiday? Great yeah, they're getting they're get they're getting drunk as possible. Like 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 that's the whole purpose of the holiday in people's mind. Let's just like drink as much as possible. Right? Yeah, Saint Valentine was. So it's so it's 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 interesting um but like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he he he's saying because that's the tendency to to want stuff to want material things to expect right but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying that we shouldn't want anything uh material nadanam najanam nasundarim kavatam bajagadish kame uh so we don't want uh, wealth or whatever beautiful, handsome spouse, or we don't want uh, followers. We don't want any of these things. Fame, followers. We just want uh, to be able to um, serve Krishna uh, uh, birth after birth. So, so you could see it's 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 such a it's such a huge it's a complete opposite. Um, Krishna consciousness and material consciousness is complete opposite. Um, so we should take it as a lesson, a religious lesson, that. Of course, to think that Janmashtami is going to uh, devolve into a gift-giving uh, exhibition and you know expecting stuff from people and forgetting all about Krishna. Of course, to think that it's kind of it's hard to imagine that, right? Um, or that, or that whatever 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 holidays we celebrate as Vaishnavas and our Vaishnava calendar will devolve into something just bizarre. But it happens, and um, it happens large scale. So, um, as followers of Srila Prabhupada, we have to protect. Uh, Actually, the it says those who pro, those who protect Dharma are protected by Dharma. Dharma Raj. <laughs> those who protect Dharma are protected by Dharma means that those who uphold the re religious principles, those who stand for the truth, they're protected by Krishna. So that is our duty um, to not let things uh, devolve, to not think that things water down, or what to speak of become lost. At least we could strive for that within our lifetime. What happens after that, I mean, what can we do? But we have to do our part. Um, and uh, as mentioned here throughout this purport, the, the chanting of the Holy Name, it is most powerful. Um, it says even if it's not pronounced properly. Now, of course, we have to be careful about that. <laughs> so, all right, Jai, this is this gives me my you know green light for not pronouncing. 
because it's uh, one devotee said we should actually record ourselves chanting because you know you, you put your phone there you you start you press the, the the recording button and you know eventually you'll forget that it's there that's the idea and then you just chant like you would without it there and then you listen to it later and to see how how we're chanting and it's it, it it could be quite shocking because we could be just I don't know we chant like the first half of the mantra, but we just forget about the whole last half, or, I mean, it could get very interesting, you know. Um, not pronouncing properly, or like, what is, you know. So you see stuff over the years living in a temple, you know, you see devotees joining, and, you know, you, you hear it over the years also. So, so we should be careful um, that we're pronouncing properly. Um, <clears throat> okay, so does anybody have any questions or yes? Question on this last or comment. Point. Yes. Thank you. I have a question on that last point. Now, Krishna is in my heart. He knows my intention. Why are you so hung up on the dry ritualistic mechanics? I'm trying to chant Hare Krishna. Maybe I don't chant it, you know, exactly properly, but I'm trying. Krishna knows I'm trying. So is it just by the dry ritual or the actual phonetic pronunciation that you capture Krishna? That sounds pretty mundane. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not by... For example, there was one person named... I think his name was Ram Das Vishvas. Anyways, Ram, but... And he was chanting all the time, Ram, Ram, Ram. He said he was chanting 24 hours a day, actually. Ram, 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 Ram. And, I mean, most people kind of look at him, wow, this is really impressive. So he actually traveled with one associate of Lord Chaitanya. They traveled to Puri, Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya, Krishna come again 500 years ago, so the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the form of a devotee. So anyways, Ram, he, Ram Das, who was chanting Ram, 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 he... He, he came with this devotee to meet Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya didn't even look at him. And you think, hey, he's chanting. He's chanting very, you know, perfectly, you know, pronouncing properly. He was meditating on Ram Chandra. He went to speak of chanting 24 hours a day. Why isn't Lord Chaitanya, why isn't Lord Chaitanya looking at him? Like if somebody comes to your house and you don't even look at him. <laughs> Actually, when Prabhupada, uh, when Abai, when when our Srila Prabhupada, when he was a young man, he brought some of the his god brothers from the Gaudiya Mat, and then Prabhupada's father was being quite uh, not very uh, welcoming to them. And then eventually, uh, he he was thinking they're from a whole different mission, like an impersonal mission, impersonalist mission. Mm -hmm. And then eventually he realized that they're from the Gautama. He said, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, please forgive me, you know, offering obeisances. So, but Lord Chaitanya was completely just rejecting this person practically. So then it came to be known later that this person was infected with the wrong mentality. And the mentality was that uh, he was chanting Ram, Ram, worshipping Ram Chandra with the idea of becoming Ram Chandra. Uh -huh. He wanted to become Ram Chandra. He wanted to become God. So Lord Chaitanya didn't accept this. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's not just, it's not by perfect pronunciation or even chanting 24 hours a day, but one has to have the right mentality uh, in order to capture Krishna's attention. Um, but in terms of, oh hey, well I'm trying, Krishna knows what's in my heart, can't he just accept my uh, effort? then we would just say, you know, try a little harder to renounce properly. Just ba It's not so difficult, this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, not so. Just try a little harder and be conscious of it. Just like someone would say, hey, well, Krishna will accept my offering on the altar. It's, it's about the devotion, you know. The fact that I burnt it, well, yeah, but I, my intent was good. But, I, but I'm serving Krishna burnt, you know, boiled cabbage every day, you know, it's just like... <laughs> Well, you could do a little, you know, how about some other vegetables? How about not burning it? How about not, how about not boiled cabbage? <laughs> you know, there's like more effort. So, 
Yeah. So that's, anyways. That's <laughs> Yes. That verse ending in bhava, bhava, grahi, janardana, it has to be pronounced properly, uh, is all about, it's all about, it's all about mispronunciation. Do you know that? Go Murko vadati, this is from the Chaitanya Bhagavad. Murko vadati vishnaya, diro vadati vishnave, ubriyas to samam punyam, bhava, grahi, janardana. So the murka, the fool, he says vishnaya when addressing the Lord, but that's uh, grammatically wrong. It's Vishnave, right? But the Dira, the Brahman, he says Vishnave. But both of them get the same punya, get the same result, because Janardan is looking for, for your sentiment. Yes. But the, 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 way, the other, the, okay, well that seems to be a defensive way you can pronounce any way you want if you're doing sincerely. But just like as a person who is first offering something to the Lord, he sincerely, you know, is, is trying, but it doesn't come out right, but he offers it. Yeah. But how about the fifth time, tenth time, hundredth time, you know, yeah. ten months down the road? If you're still doing that, that shows you're not really sincere. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, you, you love someone. Won't you try to do it nicely? Yeah, yeah. Nicely as possible? Yeah. In other words, Krishna is very tolerant, but he's, but he's, he's seeing with the sincerity is also over time that you're trying to perfect the whole thing. Yeah, over time you advance and do things properly and better and... Just, just like, anyways, I don't know if she's listening, but Kanchanbala, she said she was a young teenager and she was just coming to the temple and she's actually still living with her parents because she was so young. And, and uh, she said that she, she decorated her altar with a you know, bunch of you know, different rocks and you know, moss. It was moss, huh? Wow, moss and sticks and different things. And... And then Prabhupada was oh, very good, you know, you should continue, you know, your devotion and, you know. Um, now over time, of course, you, you know, you, uh, you realize that, okay, well, I should decorate with other things. Or, so in the, in the beginning, things may be acceptable, but over time we learn different standards and all that. So, anyways. Yes. You made me think of it. Prabhupada gives the quote that because my child went, my mother went naked as a child, she should go naked now. <laughs> and, and on exactly this point, that you know, as as we grow and mature, we become, you know, yeah. what's accepted as a child is not acceptable as an adult. Yeah. If you'll allow me, I think I just made this point yesterday. There's so many other devotees here. Pronunciation of, of the whole, so, so Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. The word Rama is a name for Kamadev. So if you're not careful and you're chanting sloppily, you're calling on Kamadev. You're not calling on Krishna, or, or, you know, who is Rama or Rama himself. Although, after singing the Samsara prayers in Mayapur, 1973, uh, I was there. Prabhupada said, actually, this Goror, you're not saying it properly. You are calling me a cow. He said, but I do not take offense. I appreciate your intent. So it, there's a fine line. <laughs> the spiritual master is not a cow, right? Okay, so... Yeah. So any other uh, question or comment? Hare Krishna? Yes. That's true. Yes. Tamal Krishna Maharaj, when he was in China, he told me this personally. They were in big anxiety because they were distributing the books, but people were chanting. They couldn't say, you know, Krishna. They were, you know, they, whatever it was, you know. And our Rama Lama, they were having a lot of trouble. So what to do? They were, so they printed a card that went, now it's a little different, but in those days, I mean, if you spoke English, you could stop traffic, you know, people didn't speak English. So um, they, they printed cards that went in the books, and it said this word, this mantra said, find someone who speaks English to pronounce for you. And that's how people, you know, they would hear someone who spoke it. Once they heard it said properly and practiced, they could do it, mm. but it took some time. Mm -hmm. I think, Jeshri, you had something you want to say? You want to pass the mic to Jeshri? 
Who dressed Gordon a tie today? Who dressed Gordon a tie today? Gordon a tie. Oh, three. Oh, Amoga Leela, Ananga Priya, and Gorka. Okay. And we got feedback from Jananda. Okay. Don't get feedback from Dianan, Dianan, and Dharma Sage. I was at work and I was uh, transferring my f uh, food from container to the plate and some grains fell down and I, as I bent down to get it and I heard the voice Hare Krishna, Hare Rama and I s stood straight and I looked around and my co-worker was standing and he was, he said this, I said, do you know this mantra? I said, is this a mantra? I said, yes. He said, I said, where did you hear? He says, um, in the 70s, this was a song, but George Harrison's song was very <laughs> popular and these are the words from there and millions of you know, youth, they liked the song and they were singing everywhere. So I said, wow. But why <laughs> was he telling you Hare Krishna, Hare Rama? No, because did he when know? I said, no, I know, no. When oh, you said no, no, Hare Krishna. No, no, when grain fell down, I said, oh, Krishna. Oh, I see. And then he heard Krishna and they said, Hare Krishna, Hare okay, Rama, and then... Nice. <laughs> Nice. All right. Uh, what a. We've got our own manifest friend chafing his bit. Okay, Vijay. Krishna? Uh, yes. Um, uh, Balaram Prabhu, thank you very much. You're very kind. Don't about pronouns. Prabhu, the quote from the translation goes as follows Quote Ajamila, for example, was extremely sinful. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Quote, even if one chants the holy name of the Lord with improper pronunciation, he will achieve relief from material bondage if he chants without offenses. End quote. So based on this quote, my question is, why is it that inattentiveness is categorized as one of the offenses against the chanting of the holy name? Uh... <clears throat> well, again, it's this isn't a particular context of a Jamu Pat. I mean, you say, right, reading the text in context, right, it's very important. But um, so there's so many different circumstances in which rules apply or they don't apply or principles apply, they don't apply. But uh, again, as Bajan Ryan Swami was making the point that certain things are acceptable as as a as a child versus things being unacceptable as an adult. Um, so the idea is that over time we, we learn about the offenses and, and we try to avoid them, for example, inattention. Um, but specifically when it's talking about a jawmill not chanting offenselessly, a lot of the times it's explained as he wasn't chanting in the sense of like, okay, well, I've been a sinful guy my whole life, and okay, now the Yama Dutras are coming for me, so Narayan, you know, please save me. Get out of jail yeah, get out of jail card. All right, here we go. But he was just off offenselessly in the sense that he was a sinful guy, and he and he and he named his son Narayan, and he was scared by the Yama Dutras naturally, these messengers of death, dragging his subtle body out. For punishment, so he was scared. So he called out Narayan to his son, and because of his background, first of all, he named his son Narayan, and it's also mentioned places that he didn't fully remember Narayan, but there was some remembrance of Narayan, at least to a degree. Although he's calling his son. So, anyways, the devotees are going to go out on book distribution now, so we'll have to stop. Okay, Grantaraj Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai.